welcome to the Oval, home of Anisir Albions, or the Buns as they're also known. They're here to take on West End in an Adder South West League game. And of course, welcome to a new series of FC Cymru. Yes, indeed. Listen, we've had our Euros tour. We've had a little break. We've got back into pre-season training and now we're ready. Welsh football is back. We are back and we are ready to roll. And we're back at somewhere where we started our very first FC Cymru episode way back in March 2018. And since then, there's a new stand, a bigger ground, tier three status has been achieved. So this club has been doing some fantastic things. And we'll be finding out all about that. What else we got coming up, Juxi? Well, coming up, we're at Amlock Town's Huddle Sessions to find out a bit more about the women's coaches there. And we've been at Chepstow Town against Cumbran Celtic to find out what the volunteers there have been up to during the pandemic. Absolutely, but without further ado, come on, let's get stuck in. So Craig, there's been some hard work going on at the club, hasn't there, for the past few years. Can you tell you a bit about the makeover the club has had and the reason behind it and all the people that have been involved as well? Yeah, there's been uh, quite a lot of work taking place basically over the lockdown period really when we were allowed to with the guidelines we've had 160 ton of muck go away we've extended the pitch um, behind the goal to the side to the side of that flank um, reinstated soil um, and reseeded and then obviously the, we drove up the griffin park which was brentford without tools for us um, and took the 190 seats from uh, griffin park stand uh, transport them here uh, put them in storage add seven concrete pours to to get the um, concrete in to fix them into. Uh, we got that done and reinstated in and obviously as you can see the cage, the shutters um, and basically just a general clean around the ground. AstroTurf behind the goals to, to give us the, the measurements. So yeah, lots of work have been done and by lots of volunteers. been a real community effort doesn't it here and, it, and it's all paid off it looks absolutely incredible so tell me about the pitch dimensions of course it was quite tight here the last time FC Cymru came here so how on earth have you been able to extend it even further to meet the criteria? We a lot of measuring I think we measured it about 60, 60 times um, we just about got it um, and we had the inspection from the FAW and he was he was happy and we've got it and and that's the main thing I did <laughs> I, uh, sleepless nights we all had over it, but yeah, it's great. We've 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 done it. We've achieved it, and we're over the moon with it, the community and the club. So, I mean, everyone's going to prosper off it. So yeah, over the moon. Incredible. Well, thanks, Craig. Some incredible work being done here in the Ronva, and we've been to see some more great work being done over in Ennis Morn with Amlock Town Juniors, inspiring the next generation. Well. I don't think there's a more scenic huddle anywhere in Wales, is there? This is absolutely beautiful. I do, that's one thing we are really lucky with. Yeah, a bit of, bit of wind, but the, when the sun shines, it's uh, you know, beautiful. I mean, when we started, well, a couple of months ago now, yeah, it was just great. We never, it, we never anticipated that it was going to be so many girls. Um, we were thinking maybe 20 or 30, but it, it's just gone. It's gone mad, yeah. It, it's, it's great, it really is, yeah. It's amazing, you know, you could turn up on a Wednesday and to see the enjoyment and the numbers building week upon week. You know, when we started, we thought, oh, we'll get 20 something. And then to get nearly 70, it's just brilliant to see so many girls enjoying the game. And mainly as well, building confidence, making new friends and having fun. And that's what the huddle is all about. There's two other female coaches as well, so it's nice for the girls to have somebody to look up to and think, yeah, do you know what, I can do it. And, you know, if they get enough confidence and ability, maybe they can take the step up and, and play in, in teams. But as long as they enjoy it, we know we're doing something right. I finished playing football and there was shortage of volunteers. And without the volunteers, we don't have the kids turning up. Well, there's nowhere for the kids to go, so that's when I joined. Never, never look back. No regrets. <laughs> no, it's great. It's so rewarding. Yeah. What do you get out of it? Oh, as well? it's, the, the enjoyment from the kids. They, they just love it, and you love to. They just all thrive every time they finish a game, and it's, it's their enjoyment that you get enjoyment from that. Normally, 
it's just men coaches and it's just fair when it's just girls. Like um, Do you think do you think more mums should get involved? Do Do you think there's still a little bit of a something holding holding some of the mums back from getting stuck in? Probably confidence. Yeah, yeah. But I know um, I think there's a, a B licensed women's only coach uh, coaching course going on at the moment. So there is a still accessible ways of doing it if you do feel intimidated or if you feel happier, you know, just being on courses with with women. But I definitely say there's a big gap um, where we definitely need more female coaches. It's something we've got really got to push and we've really got to look at. As a club, we're lucky in that we've got the ladies' club locally. We've been able to utilise that within the within the huddle and within the girls' game. If there's any mums out there, any you know, whether it be here, anywhere, get involved. Get involved. It's brilliant. I'd encourage anybody really, I mean you don't have to be an ex-player to do it. We've got loads of volunteers that have never played football before in their life and they come along and they, they go on the leaders course and, and they just enjoy the coaching side of it and it's, it is just so rewarding to come along and volunteer. And on a glorious summer's day in uh, in uh, the Ronda, does this make uh, the heart swell a little bit? Oh, oh, definitely. I grew up in the house next door, you know, and and I see her through and through, and this this really really proud. It's a really good moment for the club tonight. Everything the club's been through. Um, obviously, you know about the the quick rise of the tiers. We were in tier seven in 2015-16, and then. You know, all the problems off the pitch to try and get this far to meet the criteria and everything. It's been a journey and the club can be proud of itself tonight. Yeah, they certainly can. Like The amount of work that I can remember from the last time I visited, sort of yeah. three and a bit years ago, is phenomenal. Yeah. From the dugouts to the Brentford seats that yeah. are sat over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's got to be honest. And the hardest bit was the, the actual length of the pitch. Okay. And obviously, you know, you can see it's no playing fields with big area to expand. Um, the plan of permission was a long process. Could it be done? Could it not be done? Engineering drawings, quotes, to and fro, lack of funding. So we had to roll up our sleeves and do it ourselves, basically. Incredible, incredible. As we do. Yeah, and a good partnership with the council as well. It yeah, yeah, we got the council on board. You know, in fairness to the council, we were, you know, looking for to do substantial improvements, which cost a lot of money at the time of, uh, you know, a world pandemic. Um, you know, Ronda was flooded as well. You know, there wasn't money available, but. You know, there was options about trying to look to play elsewhere permanently, but it's not what the club's about, and they would have ripped the heart out of the club playing somewhere else. So, yeah, fair play to the committee. They rolled up their sleeves and they done what we do. We got the job done. Top work, top work. And as you said, the, you know, as a community club, and you look around, I mean, what, a good couple of hundred people here today. Yeah, I've got to be honest, since the Alliance, since the Alliance Premier days, we've been drawing close to 100 most games, and then getting the business end of the season, it was 100, 150. And yeah, every game since the restart, you know, it's been 150 plus. It's really, really good to see. And you've got to thank the people for back in the club and the community for showing up, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it looks like they want to get going. Aren't they? So <laughs> I think we're going to have to uh, quickly <laughs> sign off. But listen, second half, it's 1 0 to earn a seer at the moment. So we'll be back to find out how they get on a little bit later. But first of all, myself and Caitlin went across the Chepstow town to find out the work that's been going on there behind the scenes during the pandemic. They've been grafting hard too. And find out how much it means to volunteers to actually be able to come back and watch watch their teams again. So Rob, must feel a bit emotional having the fans back after the year or so we've had. Yes, it is. It's, um, it's been a long time and it is lovely to see them back, although we can only have 100, but we don't get 100 very often anyway, so <laughs> no, it's, it's great. It's great. It's, uh, 
it's what it's all about really. How important is it for people to continue connecting with the club and the community as well? It's massive for us because um, obviously we've got a lot of Chepstow boys play for us, um, which we tried the last like three or four years to get back to Chepstow players playing at Chepstow. Basically because you then get a crowd, people come and watch you because they're watching Chepstow players. We, we feel that's really important. How does it feel then to be back kind of watching Cumbran and being able to come in and watch them? Oh, this is brilliant. I mean, I, I felt like I had my throat cut not having football for two years. I mean, it's, you don't know how much you're going to miss it till you haven't got it, you know. You so sort of volunteer for the club and, yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. And then part of that enjoyment is actually just going to watch the game. Well, that's why we do it for the Saturday. We all look forward to the Saturday afternoon. Sometimes we go travel all as far as Abford West. We've been up to North Wales. But we do really look forward to it. Uh, we love all the boys, they're all like a family to us. It's, uh, even the Alpers, we're all, all the Alpers now well into their 60s, 70s. Some boys. Uh, apart from you, uh, apart from you uh, young uh, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, the oldest. <laughs> The community it, for people locally to feel like I can come up for a drink here, you know, even if the football's not on or whatever. Absolutely, it's, it's massive for the community, absolutely massive, and that's what we've done it for really. It's not just about the football club, it's about the whole community. Personally, I just want to see as many young kids in the Chepstow area playing football at their own club. Fantastic. A little step forward having the fans back today is, 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 is it is oh, a step it's a, forward, I, isn't it? It's, it's, a great, it's a great move for Welsh football, I think, to be honest, as a whole, you know. Um, having the fans back in, fantastic what football's about, really. They follow us all over the country, like, it's, it's crazy, like, they're absolutely brilliant, like, they're great, and I, we have really felt for them the last couple of weeks not being able to come into the pre-season and see, you know, the boys that we're bringing in and, you know, the, the older players that are, you know, getting on a little bit, so it's nice for them to come up and actually uh, to see us play and for us to win, you know, because that's what it's about, like, they do so much for the club and, you know, we just try to give as much back on the field for them as much as we can. Five nil, what a win! Dickie what a win to kick off your first game of the league. Well, yeah, it's a good performance from everyone. Just take it to the next game now. How does it feel playing on this pitch? Because I know there's been so much hard work going into it, hasn't it, the past few years? And there's a good turnout as well to come watch you guys. Committee have done everything, dug deep, not there any grants, so it was a pleasure to play. A tough night at the office there. Yeah, not many people are going to come up here and get points. You're a very well organised team, and I fully expect them to be at the top at the end of the season. But uh, we come out with 12, so I thought first half we put a good shift in. Tired legs, injuries, gonna ask more from the boys, and hopefully we'll chalk it up to experience and move on from this. Tell us a little bit about West End and, and where you're at as a club and, uh, um, and your sort of plans for the season, if you don't. Like. Well, we, we're currently playing at Land Darcy because Pride Dairy was deemed too small, so we're in the process of moving grounds down uh, Dylan Thomas School in uh, Corkett, not far from where we're based anyway. So we got that in the pipeline and, uh, well, hopefully now we're going to establish ourselves, stay up this year and ready for the new ground next year. But we've got, we got a good bunch of boys and we've had a good pre-season, but like I said, we've had about nine or ten injuries in isolation, so 
hopefully now when we become strong again now when everyone's back. So seeing what I guess the guys have done here in terms of getting this pitch ready for that, that's yeah. kind of a, yeah, a yeah. little bit of inspiration, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, of course for you guys. it is. Of course it is. I know a couple of Duffy and a couple of guys up here, and we want to take inspiration from it. well teams that have done this, and obviously we're looking forward to our ground hopefully be as good as this and. Uh, Take it from there. Yeah, we'll come and see your 5 0 win at start of next season. Yeah, then ho in your yeah new hopefully, yeah. hopefully, I take it now. <laughs> Excellent. And I know there's a few teams from the Ronda in the league in there. Yeah. So, are you going to be the champions of Ronda this season? Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah. Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. And there we go, Dukesy, done and dusted for our first FC Cymru of the new season. 5-0 win. What a win. What a way to start the league. What a free kick. Incredible, wasn't it? It was incredible. And it's great to see domestic football back here in Wales again, isn't it? Yeah, it's great coming up in the Ronda and the sun's shining and i still got a short sleeve t-shirt on. That is happy days. But that's it from us. We will see you again soon. Tantro nesaf, Oh, and there's one more message that we've got from a fan. Up the buns! <laughs> Up the buns! <laughs>